Yay! It's finally here! A manufacturing prototype of the Digma Defy. Wanna check it out? Preparing a product for manufacturing is one of the hardest parts of creating anything. And that's exactly where we at with the Digma Defy. Working with all the different suppliers to get every piece of the keyboard just right. That means receiving a gazillion samples in the office, scrutinizing them with exhaustion to find the tiniest imperfection, and checking how they fit with other parts of the keyboard. Great. Keep in mind that the Digma Defy is eight different keyboards in one. You can get it without add-ons, with all three, and with six other combinations of wireless, tenting, and underglow. On top of that, the Digma Defy is three different keyboards from the electronics and firmware perspective. We have wired, RF, and Bluetooth. In this video, we'll check the manufacturing prototype and update you on the development of the firmware and the electronics. Spoiler alert, we've had some adventures along the way. So be sure to watch this until the end. But enough chit chat. Let's open this case and show you the goodies inside. The first thing you'll notice is that the keycaps aren't painted. Why? But don't worry, they'll be painted when you get your Defy. This is just a sample for us to look for imperfections, like some noticeable injection points on the base of the keycaps, or the bumps on the home keys being a bit low. Let's move now to something more interesting, the aluminum top panel, which is a massive milestone for us. Really? Why? Well, we've had to work with our supplier to configure all the manufacturing processes to reach this point, getting the shape and finish right, making the holes for the switches, etc. Overall, it looks pretty good, but we've found some things we need to fix. For example, the holes for the switches are slightly tighter. You'd need to be as strong as me to pull them out. There are also some issues with the clipping of the stabilizer. The holes are a bit too big, so the stabilizer stem goes through the top plate and gets stuck. We also found that you could see the metal part of the USB cable when plugged in. And who wants that? Ew. On top of that, the shape of the top panel doesn't completely fit the diffuser of the underglow. Finally, we have strong opinions about the aesthetics of the Defy. And it turns out the texture of the brush aluminum feels kinda rough. We're looking to adjust this so it's smoother to the touch. Like my beautiful soft skin. Feel it. Feel my skin. It's really soft. Another thing that's as smooth as my skin are the pump pads. On the rays, we used self-adhesive silicone pump pads, which you could detach and reattach. However, silicone can lose some of its stickiness over time. For the Defy, we wanted to improve that experience, so we envisioned pump pads that were held in place by, wait for it, magnets. The pump pads are composed of three elements, the base, the magnets, and the pad itself. The first challenge was finding the right amount, size, and position of the neody neodymium, neodymium of the neodymium magnets. We tested endless variations until we finally settled for three, forming a triangle. However, the biggest challenge was finding a suitable material for the pads themselves. Keep in mind that we need the pom pads to be completely flat. However, the leather at skin tends to bend the filling material upwards. We started with memory foam, as we liked how it adapts to the shape of your palms like a pillow to your head. But it bent too much when we tensed the leather at skin. And if we didn't tense it, the leatherette would wrinkle. So we finally went with ethylene vinyl acetate, or as you common folks know it, EVA which is very light and the right amount of soft. It doesn't surround your palm like memory foam, but it's really comfortable. Plus, the leatherette skin wraps it perfectly and the bottom surface is completely flat. We've also had to explore multiple suppliers and endless different leatherette skin. Great. There's still some finessing to do where the pad meets the base, and we're still testing different designs for the base, but we're very close to the final version. So moving now to the interior of the keyboard. There's something you'd like to hear about, or to be precise, to not hear. I'm talking about the sound dampening solution. There are two sounds we're dampening, the impact sound that is made when the switch hits the PCB, and the reverberation inside the keyboard. 
So we've added a thin layer to the PCB to reduce that impact sound and a thicker layer between the PCB and the top plate to minimize reverberation. For the thick layer, we tested felt and EVA foam. They both improved the sound quality in a very similar way, but we finally chose the EVA foam because it was easier to manufacture and assemble. However, finding a thin, easy to install, flexible yet rigid material to stick to the PCB proved to be a little more complicated. We started with a one millimeter EVA, but it was too flexible, making it extremely difficult to install. We also tried rubber, but it had a similar problem. While other more rigid materials were easy to install, they offered almost no sound reduction. But then we tried a felt and it felt perfect. Flexible when you press it vertically and rigid when you pull it horizontally. With those two in place, this is how the Defy sounds with Kale Speed Silver Switches and ABS keycaps. Does that sound nice? Do you like my voice? Do you want me to keep going? But let's turn the keyboard around and take a look at the base. We were thrilled to receive this sample. It's key to assembling the keyboard and testing how everything fits. However, all our joy turned into despair once we assembled it and noticed it was around half a millimeter thicker. As a result, you can see the base is not entirely flush with the diffuser, which is a big no-no. It's not only an aesthetic thing. This would make the keyboard 0.5 millimeter higher. This was quite a setback. We had to work with our supplier to ensure that the plastic was evenly distributed in a thinner mold. Fortunately, the fixed base is already on its way to our office. But that's not the only improvement. We're changing the color of the copper screw inserts so they don't stand out as much. We're also making adjustments to hide the adhesive under the rubber pads. Finally, we're rounding up all the sharp corners of the base, especially around the hinges of the tenting legs. And now that we've mentioned the tenting legs, let's dive into that. For the tenting legs, it's paramount that they're extremely sturdy and that the experience of unfolding them feels like opening the lid of a MacBook. But in our sample, moving the legs and rods felt too light and flimsy. So we changed the hinge mechanism on the base and we added a small silicone piece to the base so the leg gets tucked into position when folded. Plus, we're making millimetric adjustments to the size of the rods. That's why you see a bit of tape on them. It's for the tests. But after we changed the hinge mechanism and started doing resistance tests, we broke one of the legs. To top it off, the silicone rubber cap for the legs didn't pass our quality tests. Under regular use, it stays put. But when we pulled as hard as we could, we tore it apart. So we're now exploring a stronger aluminum alloy and different solutions for the cap that even the Hulk couldn't break. Okay, so the mechanical manufacturing of the keyboard is making progress and we're polishing every detail of the design to perfection. But how would you feel if the Defy didn't work as you expected it to? Pretty shit, right? That's where the firmware and the electronics come in. The next big milestone will be that the Defy passes the CE pre-certification tests. But to do that, we need to have working electronics and basic firmware. We did pass the test for the wired keyboard in July, which was huge for us. To put it into perspective, it took us half a year and innumerable trial and errors to pass this certification for our first keyboard, the Digma Race. This time around, everything was okay on the very first test. We were supposed to do the same for the wireless version by the end of August. However, despite all our efforts, we're still two weeks away from being ready for that, which means everything is delayed. Four weeks. We expected to ship the Defy in December, and that date has now moved to January. Sorry guys, we've worked our butts off, but we face not one, but three major challenges. First, the chip crisis. Second, China's zero COVID strategy. And lastly, the complexity of the Digma Defy's firmware. As most of you might know, there's a worldwide chip crisis. Not crisps or chips that you eat, but microchips. This has affected our project greatly, although not tragically. 
For example, it's making our electronics engineers spend more time on the PCB. The main problem is that some minor components that are usually cheap and easily available are now either completely unobtainable or are so expensive that they render the project unviable. That means that he has to search for other components that comply with our spec sheet, make the necessary adjustments to the design, find a supplier, negotiate the price, etc. And it's a jungle out there. But most importantly, it's affecting the firmware development too. We secured our critical firmware related components long ago, like the RF gateway, the key scanner, and the neuron, among others. However, we didn't expect that to secure all components, we needed to literally have them in our hands. And we learned that the hard way. Some of you might not be aware, but besides the Defy, we're also manufacturing a new batch of our other keyboard, the Digma Race. This is our fourth batch, so it's a pretty straightforward project that we could easily handle as a side task. But then, one of our suppliers bailed on us. They notified us that they couldn't deliver the key scanner microcontrollers, the chip that reads your key presses and sends them to the neuron. We had an agreement and already paid the full price, but now they're asking us to pay eight times more. Eight. <laughs> that meant we had to find another chip that met our spec sheet and didn't cost so much, but also adapt our firmware to work with it. Our senior developer managed to do it without compromising the features. And the fourth batch of the race is already in assembly. But it took him three weeks to do so. And that's time we won't get back for the Defy project. Of course, we have learned our lesson. Now we have all our chips really secured. They are literally stored in a safe in our assembly facility in China. Then there's China's zero COVID strategy, so which like constantly puts neighborhoods and like even whole cities into full lockdown. For example, our electronic supplier has been shut down for the last two weeks and we're even struggling to get them to answer our messages, let alone send us components. Hey. Hey! Hey! Plus, our supply chain manager has been quarantined on various occasions, and that has caused delays too, since he couldn't visit the factories to do quality control, pick up samples, etc. There isn't much we can do about this. We want to send our lead product designer, Manel, to China later this year, but he might face the same problems. Finally, and to be completely honest, we underestimated how difficult creating the firmware would be. From an electronic standpoint, the Digma Defy is two different products, wired and wireless. But from a firmware perspective, it's three products, wired, RF with 2.4 gigahertz wireless, and Bluetooth. We knew it wouldn't be easy, but not this hard. We hired a firmware developer half a year ago. We have two full-time freelance firmware developers working for us, and our full-stack developer is also knee-deep into the project. But it's not enough. So we're finalizing the hiring of two more firmware engineers. Okay, what next? We aim to send the keyboard to the CE pre-certification test in the next couple of weeks. The electronics are ready, but we still have to do some final touches to the firmware. Once we do that, and depending on the test results, we will need to adjust the electronics and continue working on the firmware so it has all the features that make the Digma Defy a productivity machine. Layers, combos, macros, super keys, the lot. But let's be realistic and remember that there are some uncertainties regarding the test. With the aluminum top plate and so many electronics crammed inside, our keyboard is like a small Faraday cage. We need to ensure that the connection is strong and stable enough, which might imply making some changes to the electronics and even the mechanical parts. We're confident to come on top, but we want to be transparent about what we foresee as possible causes for delays. Our main goal is to deliver the best keyboard we can imagine. And we believe you want that too. We'll continue publishing regular updates to keep you informed. So make sure you like and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get the Digma Defy sooner. On behalf of the Digma team, thank you. A great thank you to the Digma team. No, a great thank you from the Digma team because I am part of the Digma team. So from the Digma team and to the Digma team, to and from, and everyone out there. Goodbye.